walking around befuddled. They can't understand how these things are happening to them, which should never, ever, ever happen to them, which are consequences of this obfuscation of the currency, inevitable consequences, which no one can avert except by rectifying the system. They don't know what's right. They don't know what's wrong. They don't understand what's happening to them. But no one has endorsed this. They simply have to borrow, Mr. Paul, because it's impossible to maintain a vital circulation and thus even to continue servicing initial debts unless we borrow, 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 in fact, at an ever-escalating rate when the currency is subject to exploitation by interest, which you advocate. And even the people who had houses did well for a while. The average person on the street indirectly did benefit. No, 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 no. People never benefited by paying three or four or five houses uh, 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 for one house to mere publishers of our promissory obligations to each other who intervene upon our commerce solely for the purpose and solely with the means of exploitation. No, 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 no. We never did benefit. So wrong is this assertion that, in fact, all he's really describing is a fact that for some while we could sustain the debts so long as we could maintain a vital circulation up to the very limit which he recognizes exists but does not recognize why it exists in this fact of a limited lifespan owing to interest which in fact Austrian quote-unquote economics advocates in this extremely profitable business of banking, which Mr. Paul tells us we're going to benefit further from, as he just did now, at under elevated rates of interest, which can only exacerbate failure at a faster rate. But when push came to shove, the big guys got the bailout. Push came to su- shove. This is also preposterously ambiguous. I mean, uh, no one should think that anyone who uses such uh, ambiguous, obtuse terms could possibly have uh, resolved the issues here. What he's actually referring to is an inevitable failure. What do you mean, push came to shove? You know, oh, we stumbled to the right. Oh, we stumbled to the left. Oh, we tripped over our own foot. No, the fact of the matter is the same obfuscation of the currency has caused this inevitable failure, and he's calling the end of it push came to shove. Well, of course, he's, uh, you know, favorites of the he purported economy, this live economy, you know, uh, go first in line. It happened before, it's happening again, and what do you expect, you know, when sh- when you charge interest for money in this extremely profitable business, which Austrian economics, the lie of Austrian economics, too, advocates. They were making a lot of money, and the little guys got stuck with uh, mortgages that they couldn't pay. So what is the connection then, you know, between the actions of the Fed is taking and the national uh, debt. Actually, the rescued entities were rescued because they were failing under this inevitable failure. So now we're going to discuss uh, Mr. Paul's uh, uh, take on uh, the ramifications of this obfuscation of the currency, which he himself advocates in regard to the federal debt. But we wouldn't have a national debt like that. It would automatically stop. If, if the Fed couldn't create money, uh, if we were spending too much and uh, we didn't want to raise taxes, we'd go to the market and we'd borrow. But if we borrowed too much, interest rates would keep going up, up, up. It's so preposterous to fathom what he's, what he's asserting here that uh, it's just difficult to fathom this with, uh, uh, you know, at uh, – as, as it blows by these 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 mere words, so let's play that one one more time for the sake of understanding what he's advocating: higher rates of interest. But we wouldn't have a national debt like that; it would automatically stop if, if the Fed couldn't create money. Of course, if the Fed could not create money, 
uh, or some entity could not create money, there would be no money. So we have to create money. But the question is, how is it done? There is no automatic stopping, as he's describing here. Uh, the only thing that can arrest uh, perpetual accumulation of federal debt is uh, elimination of federal overspending, which is accomplished only by mathematically perfected economy, and eradication of interest, which is accomplished by mathematically perfected economy. So mathematically perfected e- economy solves these things. But Mr. Paul is not even citing the principles, the ramifications, the causes, which all have to be resolved into an effective actual solution here. Uh, if we were spending too much and uh, we didn't want to raise taxes, we'd go to the market and we'd borrow. And how exactly would that be any different than uh, borrowing from the Fed, as he's about to tell us? But if we borrowed too much, interest rates would keep going up, up, up. There you have it. Exactly what he said for all these years would have staved excessive borrowing, but which could only necessitate further borrowing because greater sums of interest relative to any existent sum of debt would have to be reborrowed back into circulation to maintain a vital circulation, thus exacerbating the failure by higher rates of interest, which multiply debt at a faster rate. Stop borrowing, on the other hand, to uh, 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 ostensibly quit accumulating further debt, what happens? You're paying principal and interest out of the circulation, deflating the circulation until you suffer failure because you can't sustain uh, your, your, your existing obligations to service debt. So this is just preposterous, preposterous, preposterous. You know, you have to do the math. You have to provide accountable math. Where is the math? And people say, hey, you know, we're going to have a recession. Interest rates 10, 12, 14, 15 percent. Actually, then, he's inadvertently confessing here that the higher rates of interest are going to cause a a depression. So, uh, you know, here he is confessing that he's causing one and as if higher rates of interest could scare us away from borrowing to maintain a vital circulation and thus prevent a, a depression absolutely preposterous. They can only exacerbate it because so long as we maintain a vital circulation, the higher rates of interest don't scare us away from having a depression. They, they, they cause a depression by multiplying debt at a faster rate. Simple arithmetic. We better get out of the market. We have to cut down spending so the people would have the money. Exactly dead wrong. Higher rates of interest transfer possession of all the money to the banks as we pay principal and higher rates of interest out of circulation more so than we would lower rates of interest. Again, they exacerbate failure, they exacerbate exploitation, and they increase the rate of failure to terminal failure. But if the Fed comes in, they allow that bubble and, uh, and malinvestment to continue so they create the credit. So, um, again, it isn't a matter of allowing a bubble to continue. It's a matter of having to maintain a vital circulation subject to interest, which you advocate. We can't just stop borrowing. We, 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 pay, we pay the principal and interest out of circulation when we suffer this terminal sum of debt in the end at a very rapid rate. This is why all these rescue plans exist, because of the deflation, which you are never accounting for, Mr. Paul, in your constant claims that we're suffering inflation and that that inflation is causing this. There is no circulatory inflation. We are suffering from starvation for money and a dedication of what little money is in existence to servicing this perpetual escalation of artificial indebtedness, which you, too, will impose upon us by preserving interest in your concept of purported banking. If you allow the market to work, the signals would be there, and it it would be turned off much sooner. What's preventing the market from working but interest? And how can it be a free market at all if it's 
subject to ever escalated exploitation by interest which which results in terminal dispossession and failure it 's not even a free market that he 's advocating although he 's constantly uh, uh, c- claiming this virtue of free markets of of banking under purported Austrian economics lies 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 there is no such thing so uh, th- what signal you know what signal would have stopped things? The signal is the nature of the currency can only uh, precipitate in terminal failure. So from the very beginning, the concept is adverse to any object of a free society. Interest is terminal. Interest is unjustified. These purported banks are merely intervening upon our commerce to, to publish evidence of our promissory obligations to each other. And this man is advocating that and saying that some signal would exist at some time, which we would just turn off the borrowing, which is unavoidable, which we cannot turn off. And why? For the simple fact that if we stopped borrowing further, we would fail to maintain a vital circulation. And what would happen then? All the money is gone. How would we sustain our industry? How would we continue? How would we persist in servicing this falsified indebtedness, which Mr. Paul advocates persisting in? And where, in fact, did the circulation go? We simply paid it out of circulation in servicing existent debt in the way of principal and interest. And how do we get it back from the banks? only by borrowing further when the circulation is subject to the unwarranted, unjustifiable imposition of interest. The Fed shouldn't be allowed to monetize debt. Whoa, 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 whoa. Monetize debt? They're not monetizing debt. They're monetizing wealth, and the result is a debt. But the actual debt is a promissory obligation to each other to pay principal out of circulation and thus to retire principal, whereafter it is the property of no one. It no longer exists as an obligation or representation of wealth. The problem here is not that they're monetizing debt. The problem here is they're obfuscating our promissory obligations to each other into a debt to this purported banking system, the very thing that you advocate, Mr. Paul. When the banking system never gave up any lawful consideration by which such a debt could possibly be construed to exist. No such debt does exist. So this is just laundering the principal into their their unwarranted and unjustifiable possession is enough of a crime against us. But then to multiply that as if some uh, earned wealth and and possession was at risk to ostensibly justify interest and to multiply debt by interest then into terminal debt, which you assume somehow could just be uh, avoided by simply stopping borrowing when this is an obligation to pay more than existing exist in circulation, out of circulation, and to borrow that back merely to maintain a circulation so that we can persist in, ex- in, in servicing our existing sum of debts. I'm sorry, your whole idea is absolutely preposterous, and you can't even provide the simple arithmetic which could possibly uh, uh, justify your assertions. And the Fed, again, under fire for the second round of quantitative easing also. The need for quantitative easing or, or, or stimulus of, 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 of the purported economy, the lie of economy, which can only impose ever-escalating cost upon us until it dispossesses us of everything by artificial multiplication of indebtedness. Uh, this idea of, of quantitative easing is a necessity, in, if, if you will, uh, in the later stages of the lifespan of uh, this finite lifespan uh, because uh, debt has multiplied uh, artificial indebtedness in proportion uh, to a circulation and remaining capacity to pay. And so in exceeding the creditworthiness of the people to borrow further to maintain a vital circulation, uh, we're deflating the circulation, paying uh, out of circulation our uh, constant uh, obligation to service this uh, escalated sum of
debt. And so being as we're unfit to borrow further to maintain a vital circulation, the only viable medium for maintaining a vital circulation is spending money into circulation through the government in debt, which isn't even being serviced, which is what we we call this uh, – we, we use this uh, ambiguous term for quantitative easing. What this 